Smith, and welcome to The World Transformed. All this week, we're talking about weird topics. We're finding the weird, and we're fixing it where we can, but I'm not sure about <laughs> what we're going to be able to do tonight. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. A little weirded out, but super fantastic. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing great. Now, we did fix the weird on Monday. So if you want to hear us go down the rabbit hole and then come back out, that's, uh, that's Monday's show. The Mandela Effect on Monday. We solved it. Anyone still, exactly. still worried about that? Just go listen to the show. Now, we, we got a much bigger one here. I mean, the title says it all, Aliens Among Us. Are you ready, Stephen? Actually, we're not going to talk about like aliens living in the basement of the neighbors across the street or anything like that. If you're looking for that show, we'll have to defer that one. To later, but we are going to talk about aliens, and the question is, is it possible that there are alien species among the living species on the planet with us today, that some life on Earth did not originate on Earth? And this takes us back to the idea of panspermia, which we've talked about before, the idea that maybe all life on Earth came from elsewhere, that perhaps this planet in its early stages was seeded with organic material, or even maybe primitive, crude, living things that led to the evolution of all life. And I was talking on Monday about how skeptical Wikipedia has become of late. Folks, if you're interested in panspermia, read the Wikipedia article. It is well cited, and there's an awful lot of re research on this idea. This is, a, this is an idea that is taken seriously scientifically, and there may yeah. be something to it. There's a lot of reason to believe that it that the Earth was seeded at least by organic materials. We we come across comets that are full of amino acids and all kinds of things like that that life could could use, you know, to get started. But one reason that it's that it's thought that it, it might be more to it than that, that it might actually be actual living things that got here, is because we're looking back in the geological record, almost as soon as it was possible still for life to arise, because I mean our Earth is still hot, right? Yep. Almost as soon as it was possible, there's life in the record. And so is, is, was there really enough time for biogenesis to take place here? Or did we get, get seeded by something? And, and of course, the, and the more we learn about uh, little creatures like the tardigrades and things like that that can survive in space, the more it seems possible that you know we got seeded by by some something else it might have been that it, life took off on mars when it was wetter and and more conducive and then by way of uh, a meteorite strikes mars in the ejecta that's sent out the earth ends up getting seeded right it could be something like that it's interesting yeah. because biogenesis on its own is a process that is not understood can't be replicated no. and we don't have a great theory for how it occurs anyway how long should it take we don't know yeah, but, given the right conditions, it could take forever or it might just be almost a given that it happens. We, we yeah, maybe Earth is just a life planet. machine. Maybe planets are just, yeah. are, are just life machines. But if so, then doesn't that increase the chances that there's more life stuff just floating out there too? So what if right. it wasn't all life that came from someplace else? What if just some things came from someplace else? And that's kind of our, that's kind of our topic here. And we're going to start with one species, and then we're going to move up to a much bigger species, a much, much more controversial species. But this one is really cool. Read this story. A controversial study has a new spin on the otherworldliness of the octopus. You know, this is the golden age of octopus research that we're living in. You hear more and more about these creatures I love those things anyway. I, I, get, get on YouTube and watch some videos. So these, these things are cool. Okay, <laughs> just you'd think uh, we we would have known everything there is to know about uh, octopi by now, but we just don't. We, so, we're learning so much. My and my nine year old is fascinated by octopus. She, she yeah. We 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 put one on her birthday cake last year. Okay, and her favorite <laughs> oh, cool. stuffed animals are octopus. So there's just something something really interesting about about these creatures. They are similar to squids and some other creatures that live down there, but so different. In so many ways, they don't have that shell. They're much smarter. They seem to be manipulating their environment in ways that that hardly any vertebrates even do, much less invertebrates. Right? They yeah. seem to be. You put you put a treat inside of a jar, a screw top jar, and put it down into the uh, into the water. They'll unscrew it and get into it. You talk about smart. These things are very smart. You put them in a container with a hole that's like an inch in diameter. They can squeeze their body through. It's weird and remarkable creatures. 
And do you remember we talked about years ago, there was a story going around in this aquarium where the sharks were dying. And finally they got footage late at night and the octopus was, he was just killing the sharks, basically. It was like, well. <laughs> wow. How was the octopus doing that? Strangling him. It just get his tentacles around wow. him. In fact, I'm surprised no one has made a movie about that yet. So uh, there, there's a creepy downside to the intelligent octopus, too. They are kind of weird-looking creatures. But the point is they're very distinct, very, very different. Genetically, they're very different from almost anything else on Earth. They're very different in their environment from other creatures living in the ocean. And here's this research. This is not mainstream thinking, but this is also not some crackpot. Okay, this is not some guy just decided. These are scientists who put this paper together. And I'm quoting here, it is plausible then to suggest they, octopuses, seem to be borrowed from a far distant future in terms of terrestrial evolution or, more realistically, from the cosmos at large. So Looking we're not saying that. octopus are aliens, but that's, what, that's pretty, much, pretty much what we're saying. Now... Yeah. Here's what's interesting to me about that. First, it's just totally cool, and it makes complete sense. If you were going to pick a creature on the Earth, if somebody said, okay, one thing on Earth is an alien, what is it? I said tardigrades, actually, but octopus would be on the top, in the top <laughs> ten. For sure. It'd be in the top three for me, right? I think tardigrade gets number one, and there's the octopus, and then there's the one we're going to talk about next, which is, which is right up there. Okay, But if this is true, then it may not mean that life evolved here and then something came from outside, it may mean that we got a couple, who knows, maybe multiple seedings from space, right? Maybe we got hit one time and all life started going, and then millions of years later, even a billion years later, something else hit, related, but different. Conventional science would tell us there was one biogenesis on this planet, and everything on this planet is related to everything else that's living. But there's some pretty big outliers, and among them is the octopus. So that's, 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 that's an interesting idea. And the other possibility is maybe there were separate biogenesis events, and the octopus is evidence of that line, right? That we look at the record and we assume it only occurred once, and so we, we draw the line accordingly. But maybe not. Maybe there were different lines leading to different things. But the idea that we're just occasionally getting seeded with new alien life is a fascinating one to me. I just, I love that picture. And that takes us to the video that you sent me, the YouTube video. Stephen, tell us about the seven reasons why humans may not have come from Earth. Okay, we are weird creatures. We look different from other creatures. By and large, mammals, at least, walk on all fours. We happily walk on two. Body hair, we got it one, you know, basically on the top of our heads and a couple other places, but it's just all other mammals, practically, except for ocean-going mammals, interestingly enough are, you know, covered in hair. Um, we're too advanced. In this particular article, they're saying even our circadian rhythms seem off for this planet. We don't like it here. If it's always too hot or too cold or whatever. And we're, we're overrunning the planet because we, we lack any predators, right? We're like an invasive species on this planet. So it's an interesting idea. I think it's, it's a crackpot idea. But there's reasons to go down this rabbit hole to ask why are we so different. I believe that we, we arose here on this planet, and we've got, we've got relatives. I mean, we've got great apes and things like that, and, and a biological record of a lot of different hominids that we were related to that we either killed off or bred out, right? So uh, The number one argument with this, we didn't come from Earth, is, well, who didn't? We are aliens, but you're saying... Homo erectus and Homo florensis and Homo neanderthalus, that they all did come from Earth. Yeah, exactly. And so if, if it's almost exact thing, it's from here and we're from elsewhere, then what the heck? I don't buy that one second. I mean, so, you know, the thing they always say is you could take a Neanderthal, dress him up in regular modern clothes, put him in midtown Manhattan, and no one would notice. It would just be another guy walking down the street. It would be yeah, an odd-looking odd guy, probably. An odd-looking uh, guy, but there's a lot of odd-looking guys walking down the streets in New York. You wouldn't immediately say, other human species, right? That we're that close. Right. You could blend one in. So to me, the argument falls down pretty badly there. However, right. I have to say, the sleep thing is weird. Okay? The fact that we're on a circadian rhythm that doesn't match this planet's day is a very anomalous thing. It makes no sense. How could that have ever happened? That's odd, okay? And if you want to say... I think it may be our exposure to uh, artificial light, Phil. 
I, I really do. Of all the animals on the earth, we are exposed to more artificial light, obviously, than any others. And it messes with our rhythms. We are That's different. Possible. And I, I think one of the reasons we're different, there are some times in our history, uh, you can, just based on our genetics, they can tell that we got down to a very low number of humans on this planet, at least on one occasion, maybe twice. Right. Where it, it might have been below 1,000 individuals. We're pretty inbred is one of, the, one of the things, which makes us kind of a weird species in and of itself. You take the person that looks the least like you in the world, Phil, and you're still pretty darn closely related to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're just a strange species that way. You know, uh, there's more genetic diversity, like 10 times as much genetic diversity among the few chimpanzees in the world than there are among the 7 billion people in the world. Yeah, that's and amazing, isn't it? it? Yeah. It is. We're just inbred. <laughs> that's it. Which is one reason in the animal world, they, they can happily breed with brothers and sisters, no problem, right? Well, mm -hmm. you know, that there's a big problem when when people do that. Hey, I grew up in Kentucky. Listen, I know. <laughs> yeah, that. there's a big problem when people do that, and it's in, and it's because we're already inbred. We can't do that and, and uh, expect to get away with it without some sort of uh, health problems for the offsprings. Anything weird that survived got really re-emphasized. If we had this weird recessive gene before the, the filter, right, and it survived, and then it got doubly emphasized in, in the group. I mean, and there's another weirdness that's not even mentioned in the, in, the, uh, in the video that I pointed to, Phil, is that that of mental illness. Other animals don't seem to suffer from it the way people do. But maybe some of it is due to the fact that we're uniquely burdened with our own mortality and knowledge of our own mortality, and that makes us depressed sometimes, or you, know, you have an existential crisis because of it. But I think it's more to it than that. It's particularly populations that have a lot of Neanderthal genes are, are uniquely prone to having schizophrenia. And those populations that are not of African descent, for example, are not prone to that. And so it's, we're a weird species. Although I think we're from here, we're pretty alien, too. There and the thing is, I think we got more alien as we went. To me, that's the real trick, that probably Neanderthals fit in better on this planet than we did. Probably Homo erectus fit in a lot better on this planet than we yeah. did. But they did have some of the differences. Here are the real differences. Okay? I think the center of gravity is a good one. They talk about how different we look, that we stand upright. I think that made yeah. a huge difference. You take center of gravity. Well, it freed up our it freed up our hands to do things. All of a sudden, that opposable thumb meant something when you, when our hands are free. You take center of gravity, opposable thumb, and I'll tell you the big one might be. It's a combination of we can't sleep and we don't like it here. Okay, those might have ended up being huge evolutionary advantages. They were just mutations. Yeah. If you can't sleep, if your circadian rhythm is off, it makes it a lot harder for a predator to get you. Within the tribe, there's always an adult that's awake, right? And it can holler out if, uh, if a bear or a lion comes in, right? Exactly. So, yeah. it, it turns out that's a, big, that's a big evolutionary advantage. We don't like it here. Yeah. You know what? If you don't like it here, what do you do? You, you go to the next place. If you don't like it here, what do you do? Well, you try to build a better house. If you combine just a few of those like weird little traits that may have gotten concentrated because the population got smaller, suddenly you've got a species that... Of course, it has a population explosion because we've become so, because we have become so advanced because we got those two things just kind of driving us all the time. Especially that one thing, right? It's that fundamental dissatisfaction, which I have described elsewhere as the human imperative. Right? We're always trying to make things better. We're right. never satisfied with how things are. And the previous human species, maybe they fit in a little too well, right? They were just a little too too satisfied with how things were going. And you know what? If you get too satisfied with how things are going on this planet, things start going differently and then you're extinct. So we not only <laughs> avoided that, but we became this massively successful species on the planet. So I don't know. Maybe we're a little bit, we're a little bit aliens, but I think we made ourselves aliens. We are outside in many ways of the ecological system. We've elected as a species to say, you know what? We're not even playing that game. We're not going right. to be eaten. <laughs> we'll eat anything we want, anytime we want. Uh, we just, uh, <laughs> we're just, we just, we are, we are, we are weird. But, that's just uh, how we roll. So for, for those keeping score at right. home, tardy grades, for those keeping score at home, tardy grades, aliens, octopus, very likely aliens, humans, probably not aliens. Okay, that's, I think that. <laughs> but, but weird.
I'm sorry. But very weird. Maybe the weirdest of the bunch. So right. there it is. You don't have to be an alien to be weird. Hey, kids, yeah. you do not have yeah. to be an alien to be weird. You can be weird just on your own, just the way you are. And speaking of being weird, we're going to do a brand new show on Friday. It's time to geek out a little bit, don't you think, Stephen? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's have some fun. So, like we yeah. haven't been geeking out all week. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, folks. We will be back with a brand new show on Friday. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.